this gentleman actually has a connection between the arteries and veins in his brain that should not be there. And so our goal today is essentially to take very small catheters and put them into the arteries that are actually feeding this connection. Without treatment, this person could have a hemorrhage, could pass away, could have a stroke, or could have seizures. And so it's very important to get this taken care of for them. My name is Alexander Kalesi, and I'm the Director of Endovascular Neurosurgery and the Surgical Director of Neurocritical Care at UCSD. There was a recognition at UCSD that there's been an explosion of advancement in the treatment of hemorrhages or bleeds in the brain and stroke, a lack of blood flow to the brain. And so as an academic medical center in the area, we're very committed at UCSD in terms of treating these patients in one place, providing all the neurocritical care they need and, and, and managing their problems in as effective and timely a way as possible. just a miracle and amazing and I'm probably going to cry. If you don't get that artery open in time, part of the brain dies. And so in Ms. Shelton's case, one of the six major arteries in her brain was blocked and I was able to go in with a, with a new device called the Solitaire, which is a new type of scent device. And using that and, and a balloon, open that artery for her and obviously she did beautifully. I wouldn't want anybody else to touch me. And he's a great doctor, forget it. I didn't feel anything out of the ordinary. I can only tell you they saved my life. They truly, truly did. I'm grateful that she feels that way and I'm glad she did so well, uh, but it, it, it's something that's my responsibility to provide that care. We have a whole system in place here at UCSD that if you actually have a problem like that, a blockage in one of the large arteries of the brain, we're one of only two centers within 100 miles of here can do that. For a long time, uh, in uh, neurosurgery, there are folks who did open surgery and there are folks who did the catheter procedures to treat patients. And, and as we move forward and as we've advanced, what we've learned is it's important to provide patients with disease-centered care. And so I took the time to become trained in both catheters to treat problems with blood vessels in the brain and also open surgery. And so what's really attractive about that is in a situation like this gentleman, it happens that for his problem, treating it with catheters is the best way to go. But if, God forbid, we were to have a problem here, if he was to have a hemorrhage, I'd be very comfortable taking him straight up to the operating room and taking out that blood clot and managing that problem with surgery. In Moses' case, he was born with a number of abnormal arteries that were in his head and neck and that essentially were connected to veins that shouldn't be there. In fact, he had a very large venous lake or essentially a pool of blood that was replacing the bone in his jaw. And that what that meant for him is that at any moment with a loose tooth or a cough or a small cut in his mouth, he could actually have a very brisk amount of arterial bleeding from his face. And so obviously that can be life-threatening for two reasons. The first being obviously the loss of blood out of your mouth, especially in a young child. And the second is if you're bleeding into your mouth, that can go into your lungs and, and essentially cause you to drown. Yo me sentía como un barco a la deriva. I felt like a ship adrift in the ocean. I knew my son was in danger, but there was no one to guide me, to tell me, you know what, I'll take responsibility. Él me dijo, Nunca se me olvida. He told me, and I'll never forget it, and I'll be eternally grateful. He said, I'm available to you and Moses 24 hours a day. Whenever you need me, call me. Fuego. It was something like a huge sense of relief. Finally, I didn't have to worry that my boy was going to bleed out. I don't know how to thank him. One of the real benefits of being somewhere like UCSD is that you have the opportunity to work with a, with a whole team of specialists. And so in taking care of someone like Moses, obviously it, it takes a, a whole team of people. And so I really see what I did for him is, is, my, is my role in that, in that larger team. And, and obviously we're delighted that he's done so well and you know, mom shouldn't have to worry about his kid, her kid that way. Dr. Kalesi was the one that was finally the one assigned to my case. Mr. Joe Hanning is a terrific, very high-functioning guy who was unfortunate to be born with a pretty significant aneurysm of what's called the intercommunicating artery, which is where two of the major arteries of his brain join together. We have two major ways of treating those kind of problems, either with open surgery to close that aneurysm with a clip or using catheters to fill that aneurysm with coils. I am actually trained in both methods, and so when he came to me, we actually had a series of conversations about what the best option was in him. 
and we elected to try to close that aneurysm with catheters, and we were fortunately very successful in doing that. After we closed the aneurysm to stop him from having a bleed, we obviously had to manage him for the bleed that he already had, and so he stayed in the hospital with us for over a week, and I worked very closely with our neurocritical care team to make sure, obviously, he's done as well as he has. It's a top-notch group. They, uh, they saved my life. You know, they really knew what they were doing, I think, with, 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 with my condition. When you're dealing with problems in the brain, you're often dealing with situations that are life or death. This thought in the community that when you're in that situation, that may be a situation where you may not have hope. And so it's at centers like UCSD where there's a whole team of people who work very hard to make sure you have the best opportunity for a, for a functional outcome. 